morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us from today for the fourth day of the Shift Dead Summer Summit. Um, we are so thrilled to have you back. This is our teaching theme day, which I think for a lot of us who are in design education is one of the most exciting, important things that we do. Um, so we're just so excited to get started with all of our great programming for day, today, and we are kicking it off with an amazing panel. Um, last year, Anna Matic uh, joined us from Montenegro for a lot of the shift uh, events and was phenomenal. And they are doing really phenomenal work in Montenegro at the University of Fine Arts Setnia. Hopefully I got that right. Um, and so we invited Anna to organize this panel this year and talk about all the amazing things that they're doing um, as they're also shifting things in design education. Um, so we have a whole array of amazing panelists who are gonna join us this morning and talk about the things that they're doing in Montenegro, which um, I think will be really fascinating. So a couple of housekeeping things really quickly. If you haven't joined for us for any panels, we are recording this. Um, so if you don't want your video to be part of that, please do turn it off, or this is your chance to get out, duck out of the session um, if you don't want to be a part of that recording. Um, we will be publishing these to our YouTube channel, which will be free and open source for all design educators to, to watch. Um, and then also please note that the live transcript feature on Zoom is available. So if you find that to be useful as you're listening along, please do turn that on. Um, the uh, last thing that I wanna say is just please do check out the rest of our programming for today. Um, after this session, we have three more incredible sessions and a mixer tonight, a social mixer. Um, so be sure to check those things out if you can. Um, so without further ado, I do want to introduce our volunteer community moderator, Christopher, I'm, I'm probably gonna totally say your last name wrong, um, Sloboda, Sloboda? Yep, that's it. Sloboda. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. All right. Second try. I got it right. So Christopher has so graciously and generously offered to help monitor the chat and help us with the question and answer period. So please do look for Christopher. Um, and so otherwise, I'm going to shut up so we can start listening to all of the amazing goodness. Anna, please take it away. Thank you, Liz. Uh, Sloboda means freedom on Montenegrin, only for your information. And uh, it's nice to start uh, uh, this uh, afternoon of your early morning. Uh, hello from Montenegro. Uh, I'm happy to shifting with you all again. And uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank you to AIG Design Educators community, uh, to, to thanks to all the IC shift uh, team, uh, which organizing, uh, Again, very fantastic, very important uh, uh, event. Uh, I think not only for me, for the graphic design globally. And we are happy to be a part uh, of this uh, virtual summit. Um, it's a great honor to have opportunity to have the open session, to, to host the session on teaching day. Uh, for those who maybe don't know, my name is Anna Matic, like uh, Lisa uh, pronounced well. Uh, um, I'm professor of graphic design of Faculty of Fine Arts Cetinje, University of Montenegro. Uh, since uh, 2013, uh, I'm uh, found initiator and coordinator of uh, Fluid Design Forum annually uh, conference and um, uh, president of NGO Flux. Uh, I could start now, I think I could start with the slides. I could share a uh, screen, Alberto, yeah. Select, okay. You saw my screen? You see my screen, not no, so, you see. Sorry, on my English, like always. Okay, maybe some of you saw in schedule, in agenda. Uh, title of our presentation is uh, 30, uh, 360 degrees or days of our shifted uh, teaching life. And I posted the uh, main constatation question or 
or what, uh, that we shifted uh, 180 degrees last year, and now we are shifted in 360. Looks like in the same position, we could speak about, you know, we could open the panel on the A. It was the A question, but uh, back to facts. Uh, WHO declared COVID pandemic on 11th March 2020. It was world moment, very important. And for our teachers, uh, very uh, difficult uh, way, especially because we are usually prefer and all of us prefer to see each other live. And we have the lots of countries, almost all have lockdowns and we have the new uh, new situation, uh, the physical distance uh, start to be very important. We have a new languages, new hashtags, stay safe, stay home, keep the distance. Uh, we go to some another world in, in one moment. Sorry, okay. And uh, we as a teachers must to shift to online lectures. And happen virtual coffee. I, I saw the some I don't know announcement invitation. I don't know. I even don't remember there well that shift will happen. And I was curious to see what the AAD DAC, uh, which website I very often visit before, will uh, make on the topics on COVID on shifting teaching. I am. Uh, lecture and I was so interested and they put one the very first question how uh, our teaching uh, uh, shift and I made some video for the last conference and I put here the quotation quotations of that video to see with myself and with you together uh, uh, what is is it something change between the ACL, I spoke first when, when, when that we shift in March last year. But my real opinion is yes, that the shift was very hard, but we must to learn a lot of things very fast. We learn a lot. But from the human point of view, all of us, students and professors, were eager, now are eager to shift back to classroom lectures. And what I said last year, uh, that shift back will not be a step back. It will be some another shift, shift to new reality, because we are living in shifting times. Re a year later, we are now 360 days later. Uh, I will not change anything. We are still living in shifting times. I titled my video because I titled everything. I gave the names like prefer to do it uh, shift back maybe i will change the title now only that video to shift forward this august 2021 it was some short intro and uh, according to the uh, shifted uh, uh, conference uh, papers that we it's will be uh, nice to refer uh, the, what we spoke late uh, uh, year before. And now we are in 2021, in 5th of August. This is the second constatation of the question what I ask myself. Uh, uh, what has happened during the day and what will be happen after? Maybe I need the third question that we will open on the end. Look to the calendar. Eh? We speak about dates. If you look at the calendar, it's Montenegro. There are some dates here yeah, celebrating the three days and so on. Shift and shifted, and what happens in between days, not only in Montenegro, COVID and COVID, very hot, and COVID a little bit in, and 
of May, beginning of the June was light and COVID. If we compare with the university level, it's our semester first uh, exams and the second semester. We were uh, not only Montenegro, probably all over the world in US too. We are in very uh, difficult COVID situation. And back to uh, my today presentations formally. Uh, I have idea not to speak only, not with me, to, to invite uh, lots of my colleagues and students and friends. And we want to present you what we do in this, uh, what we've done uh, in that uh, 360 uh, COVID days, it, because it looked like nothing happens, but something happens. Uh, the first case study, I could say case study, will be a short overview of and analysis of the formal teaching the Faculty of Fine Arts setting and how we shifted, uh, how fluid design for, form shifted, design form shifted, how uh, one, I spoke, uh, we will spoke about the uh, one project named X, titled X, uh, which was extended COVID teaching on Faculty of Fine Arts setting, yeah and a little bit about informal education projects for children, which we made um, last year, NGO Flux, uh, one, one online mentorship school and creative campus for young pupils. And let's start. I will introduce my colleague, uh, Assistant Professor Adela Zainilovic. Uh, uh, she will be uh, my guest panelist for the first uh, part of the session. Hi, Adela. Are you here? I think you are here. I'm here. Okay. Only to check the microphone. But before we start, uh, for many you who maybe don't know, uh, where is Montenegro? Is a small small country in Mediterranean, like you can can recognize, maybe you will recognize Italy and you will see we are opposite of Italy, on the, but we are on the West Balkans. And uh, some data from Wikipedia in capitalist Podgorica and so on. The Faculty of Fine Arts is on Cetinje. It's all the royal capital when the, um, uh, Montenegro was the kingdom in 1990. 10, 1910, uh, sorry. And it's a very small country, uh, especially when you compare it to the US and India, and some other uh, panelists who were there, only to see that it's only 621,073 of all, it's not a precise number, but approximately. And uh, it was independent country. After that, be a part of uh, Yugoslavia and uh, another similar name countries. And two at uh, 2006, we regained independence. Like you see with the quarter meters, the kilometers, quarter meters, we are, it is a very small area, but you saw on the map too. Only to know from where we are calling you. Uh, Today. This is the, our new building of Faculty of Ar Fine Arts, which I wait for the, maybe four years. I work at faculty uh, more than 27, six years. And from 2008, we start to speak with government. We are a public uh, faculty to uh, speak with government to, to have the own building. It's necessary for art uh, faculties. Uh, and back again to calendar, we moved in new faculty building. We were very, very happy. I was, I was the happiest in my life because in some moments I think that I, I will never go in that building, move in that building. But generally speaking, according to a year and more later, I, I'm still not in formally. Uh, we are in, but how many classes were alive last 
semesters. And uh, 9 and 11, I have the first lectures, and at 12, Montenegro, the day after the WHO declared COVID the pandemic, and everything's going down. Adela, okay. Adela you. could you continue? Yes, th thank you, Anna. Uh, thanks to everyone. And uh, I have to thank you in the beginning for this great opportunity to be part of this uh, 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 terrific uh, virtual uh, summit. And thank you on that. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a professor, uh, as assistant professor in graphic design, as somebody who works in faculty, I will lead you for something that is a structure of our faculty. You see how our country is small. So we are some kind of small faculty that uh, that you see we have uh, undergraduate studies which last three years and we have up to 45 students in three courses of graphic design painting and sculpture and they have we have modules that students can attend uh, graphic communication book illustration in painting you have painting fine art uh, printing and intermediate art and in sculpture you can defer sculpture or unique design also students can attend master studies which last three years and we have up to 27 students here. I know that this is maybe a small number for a larger school, but for us, this is something that we can, that is a, a quite large number for us. And we are producing more and more students. Even for this year, we accepted a graphic design for 15 students that we have. Uh, being a professor on graphic design, uh, I much better, uh, much better can lead you to what how we shifting and what happened on graphic design department. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we have uh, enrolled 50 students per year and this year also in everything what happened with the COVID we had very large uh, a number of applicants this year. As, uh, as I told you, you see we have graphic communication book illustration module with students choose on third year or on masters when which it will uh, be on in September and last two years, we have up to 10 students. And we are small collective of nine lectures. We have five professors and four assistants. And, but this is something that works quite nice for us. And we are one very, very, uh, I think, compact team that can actually uh, work with the students. We have six females and three males, if that is something that gets dynamics. Uh, continuing on this COVID year, and this is something that was really that we are in COVID years, we are in pandemic, and something that was something that we cannot, uh, um, you know, that we couldn't uh, avoid uh, talking about. Is something that we have uh, uh, five of our professors, including Anna and me, we were we contracted COVID out of nine lectures, but we are fine, and somehow this process uh, of online lectures actually gave us opportunity to, you know, to go through being uh, um, sick and getting much better and getting including and getting back and faster into track of working. And next we have vaccinated so far five students, five professors out of nine. And we hope that we will finish. Uh, some of us need to wait for our time. And this is how we shifted. This is our time, you know, uh, we have spring semester that was online whole semester except the exams. Exams were he held uh, live. We had you know, to follow the measurements, the distance, and everything that was supposed to. Uh, first semester was something that was uh, uh, very difficult for us. Fall semester of 2020 and spring semester, we did live and online sessions and live and online lectures. It was something that was uh, permanently shifting. We would uh, have to hear news. Students would have to hear news. We were in constant uh, contact about that. This permanent shift brings some things that are unpredictable. And unpredictable means that you have to uh, adjust yourself in the way of working, in the way that you do, in the process of working, the process of doing. It was, we, we changed types of teaching. I once, I told Anna, we had, I thought that I could never write as long essays about revisions as I did in this period. It was, for me, it was something that it was, you couldn't write that much. Uh, precise uh, 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 revisions on design and type and everything that you do. We, we had to face a lot of problems. When I say we, I mean both professor and both students. Uh, all of us had some kind of, uh, we all uh, fear for health, for our health, for the students, for the, uh, uh, you know, because you're in the moment, you're in the moment when you have to keep distance, when you keep, you keep the, uh, yourself from the others. Uh, something that is specific for design schools for our 
for our connection for for with the students for the action and the work this is when we when you have problem you have to keep distance even when you see them and this is uh, that brought a lot of fear a lot of anxiety because you have a lot of uh, a lot of problems that were coming. We have students that didn't have internet access or had problem with accessing. Uh, we have uh, we had to learn new tools. We had to teach the students, make them uh, that they uh, accept that way like something natural. That way you don't see like I see you now. That is something that we used to. But the first moments was were maybe funny, were awkward. You didn't know how to present them. So students are generally shy. So even they're getting more contracted when they're calling, when they're when they're talking to you online and they're turning cameras off or they're even walking away from lectures. Some of them use it. You see, there's something that things are just student-like and that were happening and we have to solve them while working. The one problem that was maybe the biggest was when you uh, receive, when you enroll the first year students and there you don't get to meet them live. They don't get to introduce themselves we see them from cameras and that is something maybe for the beginning it was a little bit difficult and when we even when we see them in those shifting periods we see them with the mask and in distance our our way of working was somehow somehow shifted from that you know open contact and everything but some things are uh, but work maintained as, as you see i'm, I'm talking all the time that we work they find the ways and this is something we 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 find we we made it we analyze it. It actually took us triple time for our work. You know, you work for classes, you work on the sessions, but there's something that can be done. You need an extra revisions. You need extra time, and uh, some students need extra uh, time for you know to to find uh, uh, from. Uh, to actually get uh, the point on or to uh, analyze everything else so it's time actually tripled but it's some things uh, that was uh, but it, everything was doable i'm trying to say that we found the way and find that you know everything was different yeah we found in our courses that we uh, uh, this is me uh, from one of our honest sessions on the with the students of final years the other courses didn't actually couldn't maybe suffer, but some practical would. Uh, in our school, designers are, you know, this is our everyday life, going to the computers. With the faculties and the student studies, which actually include work with models or sculptures, actually had more, prob more problems than we did. We just needed uh, um, to find how to better to do revisions, how to annotate, how to help students learn new software uh, and how to help them at the moment when you're speaking, how that thing uh, can be done. Um, that is something that actually, was, and this is my uh, life, and I suppose of every, every teacher educator around the world, all Zoom uh, 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 noise or whatever you're using of the software, of the images of how many, different corrections, revisions, comments, views you have to use to, to contact the students and maybe to get them. But it was, it was, it maybe tripled. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of work has been done. And that is something that I have to add. We finished all the uh, uh, plans that we started with as a professor, so the assignments, find some other way to, to finish the assignments, how to, how to appropriate them, for the, uh, the current situation that we are in. According to with the tools, so Tadella uh, spoke, um, we use a few basic tools for with the school, use uh, Zoom for the lectures, presentation, and annotation, communic live communication, online live communication. Uh, we use uh, email like before for some information. The, our university gave us the some distance learning platform uh, Moodle, which uh, I, I'm not satisfied. I, I, many of colleagues didn't use it. I use it. I, I'm like uh, I'm a good professor. I try to use it, and I find that it's okay for the theoretical uh, subject or courses. But for the practical, is too difficult. The Slack is more more common. Of if you have uh, been have, it's necessary to have some platform to communicate more visually. 
it was for the master program for the history of theory of design. It's okay, there are lectures, links, some literature, uh, essays, and so on, and uh, video links, so something, it's okay. And what we use a lot for, uh, because uh, you saw we are really working in small groups, and we are really, um, have some kind of a friendship with the students. We know they are almost know uh, or know that they are exist their parents, girlfriends, boyfriends. We know is the aunt of the boyfriend of some our student have a, some ill or something like that, ill married. Or oh, we really uh, have that familiar way of communication and um, uh, Viber is for the short fast, uh, especially what uh, Adela mentioned too. We uh, have to uh, change to shift uh, the, the way of uh, working very fast. Like you could see on this slide, uh, here is we name it. Uh, there are the students who are here. Uh, graphic communication street to the uh, consilium, like we are some MDs. And uh, uh, this is like democratic, yeah, I ask them or they ask how we, because it was open from the university and faculty. Uh, you, the small groups co could work uh, live, but if you don't want it, you, you could not. When, uh, with the first and second year, usually I spoke with the assistant, if we send them an email, like we are alive or we are online because of the Ministry of Health and the situation and the all rules that we have and uh, some, uh, not only the rules, only the, 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 the intuitive uh, uh, empathy and the responsibility for the healthy of the students are us too. And here is the rather, uh, how we will have online, no, with six of them because there are six in that graphic communication course live. They want like to be live and there are other things like uh, here is the example uh, when I see the date and time uh, oh, uh, they they know that before my mother and sister I'm positive I'm positive COVID positive coronavirus positive Robert is negative it is the information but I send them for me and after that you know Alexandra is here and others and all the time uh, with all the students especially for the uh, final years and master. I was, I was all the time on the classes. I was on Zoom, third day of my coronavirus. I have the middle light kind of uh, coronavirus. And it helped me because a lot of colleagues, Adela first called me and said, are you crazy? You will have the lectures. I said, what to do to, to sit and to think that I'll finish in the hospital in some, uh, and I will die on some with some machine or I will spend a few hours with uh, nice uh, students and nice atmosphere. We were in that time, we were in the beginning of the, some teamwork orientation systems for faculty of drama. And they went to the site and uh, sent me photos and I was, uh, and they and assistant students and Masha, she is assistant, she is the, the last guest panelist too today. And they sent me and I was okay. In the end, it's live, it's Alexandra's diploma, final diploma exam. And after that, uh, some after party on our terrace, we shared that things and share to Instagram and so on. Adela, could you take again? <laughs> Here, I'm going to make some kind of a conclusion how uh, graphic design department and in uh, how faculty partners actually uh, uh, how we shifted, how we are still shifting because we're still living in a pandemic. So uh, to make some kind of conclusion, we had a great deal of effort from all of the professor and all of the student and all of the students also that is uh, invested. In general, we were satisfied. You see the numbers in the beginning, we were a small number of professors that actually thought, and I know uh, on the other faculties that professor thought that, okay, this year is going to be like this but we're not satisfied, nothing can be done. But as I told you before, we finished, uh, I don't think most of the assignments and everything was done, you know, we did, so it did, it worked out. It took us more time, as long as live lectures, we included more different ways of communication, but it worked out. Nothing cannot, nothing, uh, cannot replace live lectures. Uh, uh, there's one comment that I would like to add. 
uh, because uh, students miss their student life, being away from home, experiencing uh, 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 student life, everything that is joy and everything that is different, that is new, that is part of the growing up. I know some students that's actually good, but they were, in moments they were some kind of angry and disgruntled with the facts. And that is something that, uh, that is uh, very important that they and everybody of them, you know, put all the efforts in, into finishing this. Uh, from the ju uh, July of 2020, there was uh, not many of us satisfied with, uh, with uh, works, there's few of us, but in the July of 2020, you see that it shifted, the numbers shifted. Is it something that is, uh, that came natural, that came because we were living in that kind of time that we actually accepted the thing uh, 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 that is maybe there's something is very comfortable now from co coming from home. Uh, as Anna mentioned, as I mentioned before, I had COVID in the last semester and I wasn't uh, taking it quite well. So uh, being at home and not being quite well and being able to get back to work uh, rather because I wasn't able, I wasn't feeling well to go to travel or to go to work, but this is something that gave me a comfort of getting back easier to work and maybe, you know, getting uh, work from home. Is it something that suits us now? Maybe it's different, but it's something that we were working still on and trying to find uh, uh, nothing change in way that you explore and trying to get better at lectures and being uh, at, at, at things that you do. We all go to, to see, we are, uh, uh, on, when we, you say online lectures, you have now a, a great deal of online lectures from all over the world that you actually include in your in your classes. That is something that is really large benefit. And you see, we are now here. I don't know if, if there is good possibilities for us to be alive like this. And what will be after pandemic? That I don't have the answer. I don't know. Maybe somebody does, but I, I only know that design education is something that is always shift. That will always grow more, grow out of it, grow in new methods, in new models. And that is something that will help us, you know, survive whatever new normalities that we're going to have to face from uh, 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 this moment now. I would like to thank you now again for having me. Anna, you are muted. Anna, microphone. Yeah, yeah, I know, but my slides now are okay. Only to go to the, my slides go. Okay. I know what will be after the pandemic, the Fluid Design Forum, <laughs> and uh, will be too. I want to introduce my uh, second uh, guest panelist, Sergio Dragovic, uh, he's an uh, alumni of the Faculty of Fine Arts Cetinje, uh, one very famous regional and international uh, illustrator and designer. Hello, Sergio, you are here. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. And it's truly an honor to be part of this uh, online conference. And uh, yeah, you, you, uh, should I start from this point or did you plan to make this uh, first part? Okay, I will, I will start shortly. Uh, since 2013, we are organizing Fluid Design Forum as an extension. It starts as an extension of a regular teaching program of Faculty of Fine Arts on the course Graphic Communication, which I'm teaching, leading. Uh, it's usually in all the Royal Capital of Cetinje, where is the faculty, but in the, also in the several uh, cities and locations uh, is in Montenegro <laughs> is like a shift, uh, shifted is on uh, voluntary basis and for the students, participants, audience is no entry fee uh, when it was live uh, lecture, CLI festival, it was the same now for online it's normally the same and what is the fluid like a lot of uh, that conferences festivals similar things series of lectures presentations discussion panels workshops and exhibitions uh, include the academic community uh, researchers young creatives design community 
uh, local government, cultural institutions, and try to uh, include uh, more and more in citizens, uh, individual uh, people from local uh, communities to have more participative, uh, uh, to make fluid more participative, not only uh, designers and uh, architects, uh, who are usual attendants. Yes. Uh, attendees, uh, yeah, is the graphic des uh, design and architecture practitioners from uh, around the world, design and architectural students from Montenegro and the former Yugoslavian uh, countries. These are, are the numbers. Uh, some numbers are not so huge, maybe with the participants and everything, but if you uh, remember that we are a very small country, but if we have 60, 80 days of festival, that we have 184 lectures and so on, and almost 600 uh, workshop participants. It's a huge number now, if I re recap for this. And I will pass through this, uh, we have uh, eight editions, and I will pass on to the titles, we don't have a time to, to present the fluid. First year, the small one without any any support. This support is like our friends, and there is no money here. <laughs> there is the, the moral support, but uh, uh, for me very important. Uh, the, the title was uh, uh, every, every edition have some topics, some title, and last few years some statements. More city identity, Cetinje, concretely. Set in a city identity. The second year was the huge, it was the two big sessions. It, it is the, yes, uh, the, 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 we experiment. Every year we change, uh, try to do something to, to, to see the, uh, what happened. It, it was too much. Late April, the first huge session, and beginning of June or something. Yeah, yeah, June, the other date. And I didn't wake up from the first uh, session. It was the second, like two festivals. Sometimes we have some workshops, like a small spots uh, till the year, but it's uh, another thing. But here, I will not show the people and the number here. I will go to the next one. And we first time we go out from Cetinje, we go to the coast uh, in city bar, because we don't have any money. You have travel tickets, accommodation. We pay accommodation for students for Regia. Um, their professors select from the faculty two or three students, and we pay accommodation for them and for our students too. Uh, and the touristic organization of City of Bar, director of uh, touristic organization, invite us because we collaborate on some another private project and she recognized uh, fluent, uh, she first recognized fluid as an important thing. And it was the slogan tourism for culture, culture for tourism, design for, design for both. It was the first time we have some slogan. Uh, we negotiated a lot. Uh, some of the parts of the organizational team was uh, against that uh, advertising title, but I wanted to have uh, something more catchy for the local uh, people. And we have a lot of local people from tourism. We have workshop for the touristic. I lead the workshop for uh, for touristic. Uh, people who are all on the touristic places, hotels, small hotels, apartments, and so on. And the other guests uh, normally for the students have a lot of lectures, workshops, like you saw. 2016, 10 years of regain independence, and normally we name it made by me. It's do doable, it could be made by me, made by us designers, but made by Montenegro. Uh, it was a uh, little bit uh, advertising uh, hook uh, for the audience. And it was uh, the first time to be in three uh, towns, you know. Yeah, yeah, we were in three towns, yes, and you don't remember me. I wanted to be in one town, uh, to be in all towns 11 days, and all of them said so no 11 days, no. And we separate, we have lectures and workshop in Nikšić, new town, bar on the coast on the west north, I, I could say. And uh, after that, together, we uh, met in Cetinje, two groups, we were separate. I didn't, didn't till today, don't know what happened in Nikšić. Uh, uh, I, I, I wanted a short comment on that, because yeah. uh, 
we had three towns, but again, we had numerous workshops that related to uh, not only to design, but to architecture, archaeology, culture, uh, urbanism, and all of that gathered and we presented it in Zetinje uh, like one big event. And after that, we had concert and it was a blast, but we, I wanted to mention that it was special, special fluid, special yeah, edition. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And lo no, no, thank you. And uh, lots of colleagues says, oh, you go to Tetini, you do go to Bar, to Nikšić, to that small town, you didn't come to Capital, to Podgorica, you are not so visible. We, and we come to Podgorica and title was visible. Okay, we are here, come to you, but the number of audience, uh, people who visit the lectures was a little more, very few people, maybe 20 people more than usually, who was interested, they come that 50 kilometers or 60, one hour by car to Nikšić or to Bar. Sorry, it's really small uh, uh, country. Yeah. And after that, we uh, start to think that we must be more politically engaged, not politically, but social responsibility. Uh, because all of us in our private lives or in our art, design, uh, we work on that social uh, engaged uh, work, but uh, Fluid uh, must announce that we are that institution, we start to be institution because we don't exist. Uh, the festival is organized, but uh, uh, private public partnership, faculties, organizers, some private production companies support us because it's the only way to go to the uh, some open call of Ministry of Culture that we can take some uh, money for tickets for accommodation for anything. And uh, the, if you don't know, we have the fantastic uh, Boca Bay, uh, uh, the, the city of Kotor, which is in Boca Bay, is UNESCO heritage. But uh, it was lots of uh, disturbing that nice visual landscape uh, in previous years. And we decided to name it this um, fluid contamination or decontamination. And 2018, uh, we find that we still didn't find that that will happen after in 20 and 21, but we are really living shifting times before the COVID, lots of changes, lots of information. And we try to speak about that, uh, like even didn't know that it will really happen, big shift will happen next year. And I will show you the video from Shiftings to see how it looks like when we were.
I hope you will you feel a little of uh, fluid atmosphere, uh, which is the maybe the main point or our advantage or problem. What makes us uh, different from other festivals, conferences in Regia, or uh, it's the strong that we have a strong fluid community because I already said that we started. So it started as extension of the regular teaching program for our students, but for, uh, very soon we can widen it to the whole region and maybe third year, yeah. And we started to be recognized as a platform for sharing research and uh, teaching experiences. And in the moment when we started, uh, uh, we uh, really could not foresee uh, that uh, we will make this, that the need for that uh, uh, search uh, in design the region is so important and so necessary, and that that collaboration uh, is so uh, necessary, uh, direct communication, and also we could, uh, didn't could predict that the fluid exchange uh, will open many other new collaborations between lectures, international and our students, and that we make such a strong community. And what we, uh, the other people said, it's not our um, opinion. We made, we always made every year, we made I, unforgettable fluid atmosphere. Uh, we call it on our language, fluid na atmosfera. And back to the calendar, we have the two virtual summits and COVID in between days and first, the idea was to have fluid um, out term like you saw in late April, but we postponed that for October or the end of the year. And uh, we think what to do, we discuss a lot what to do. Will we lose our main advantage, our fluid atmosphere? To lose our, it's like to lose our soul, I don't know. Of if we uh, will shift, uh, what are the technical issues? Uh, the lots of uh, people in the team want to be pre-recorded. Me and Robert only be against me, olders, that youngers, <laughs> youngsters were. Uh, is, it will be online live sessions. And we were in really house. I was like, I don't know what to do. Postpone, postpone. And uh, you happened <laughs> last year. And the first time I used Slack because of your conference, and I saw that it's really good for fluid, that it's writing for fluid communication to continue to have that because we are not live. And I really, uh, you really gave me a wind in the back. Uh, to me and to all fluid uh, design forum team and i really want to say many thanks to all of the uh, aig dic uh, shift here and i must say special thanks to alberto uh, because he really uh, supported me that anna go on when i i asked him about some technical question said i'm here to support you if you need me, but go on. You, you already know and know all that tools. And, uh, and it's happened online edition, first, uh, the second October. And I will.
it's possible to do when you have the I know if you notice, but uh, I want to thank you. We have the fantastic guest panelists uh, last year, and we are proud that we presented all activities what uh, DIC uh, uh, have. And uh, I want to thank uh, the all the fluid uh, team who made the online edition, uh, especially the so six people who are uh, made the. Uh, the new things what we didn't uh, have before in last uh, in previous fluid editions, Robert and uh, Bada uh, for like Alberto, <laughs> Zoom, <laughs> YouTube and only uh, uh, communications, uh, even uh, 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 for Slack and Sandra for design and social networks. They are assistants of Faculty of Fine Art and the part of fluid design team and the students. Uh, Lana and Zvone for animations uh, and video. Sergio, thank you. You Anna. were you were one of the you were part of the team, but you were a workshop leader. Could you share your workshop leader experience online? Yeah, uh, it was my first time to be workshop leader. I'm I'm here from the start. Like I remember all the editions of Fluid, and I'm like a Fluid veteran and part of Fluid team here. But uh, uh, even if there was no pandemic and there was no this whole situation, uh, it will still be a challenge and struggle to lead your first workshop in this forum, which is honor uh, by itself. And uh, uh, as an illustrator, I'm uh, by education and graphic designer, but I do, I, I work mostly in the field of illustration. And uh, I decided. Uh, to work from that field, from that perspective, and to make uh, some sort of small project with uh, my 12 participants. And uh, I wondered how it all work out, but uh, since I'm far from faculty, except when it's for the Fluid Design Forum, I saw that students are really easy going with all of that. They got used to this kind of system and uh, communication was quite, um, fluid if i can say that um, and uh, we made uh, the uh, this small project uh, with spot illustration as starting point so concept of uh, classical spot illustration was experimented and developed into some sort of report um, why do i say report uh, the title of this workshop was on the spot uh, on the spot uh, as a title refers to um, uh, some sort of news like notion of news or a report from the specific location and the uh, uh, thing is that we did not have specific location uh, last year the whole fluid design forum was happening like in the digital universe and uh, so we managed to experiment with the format of uh, spot illustrations and make a publication out of it um, we uh, didn't want to make only digital publication, but to make physical <coughs> object. So we made uh, one edition of one of this uh, on the spot design with all the illustrations and texts included. So that was our report from this edition of Fluid from this workshop. And that wasn't enough. We also made a, a little happening. We uh, at my apartment, I adjusted <coughs> the outs and made uh, this pop up exhibition. So for presentation, we had also exhibition opening. And that's how we responded to this challenge of non existing location for this sort of event and this sort of gathering. And the overall feel of it was like we gathered actually there, like the physical presence was going on actually. So um, yeah, uh, Anna is shifting to, to, to this year's uh, edition. Um, uh, somebody, somebody already commented this on the thread uh, in the chat. So um, this year's edition is called Play. Uh, for this edition, we wanted to stop being so serious like all, all these years and uh, with all these statements and serious subjects and uh, questioning. And uh, we wanted to play uh, after this year of uh, sort of struggle. So uh, 
I've had an honor to make a visual identity for this edition for the first time as well. And uh, I hope that you read this uh, statement of this year's fluid. Uh, we will send it to you in the chat, I suppose. And uh, you're welcome to join us on the Slack or Zoom or YouTube and follow us on social media because the announcement is already made and the open call was already done. So uh, this fall, I hope that we will have sort of part live, part online events uh, of Fluid Design Forum uh, number nine. This is still 11th until 17th of October this year. I hope to see you there in even online or in a, or live. <laughs> Thank you, Sergio. We are running, the time is running. We are going on the next presentation, like I saw in the introduction, I said a COVID teaching the Faculty of Fine Arts, Project X. My guest lecturer is Bojana Femic Radosavovic, visiting lecturer in University of Montenegro in, in the field of communication PR. PR. Uh, MD Raiko Strahinja from Institute of Public Health and uh, Montenegro, Robert Alexic from NGO Flux, and students of the uh, Graphic Design Department, Faculty of Fine Arts, University of Montenegro, Aleksandra Drecun, Ivan Mijanović, uh, Miloš Nikolić, and Radislav Stijević. Uh, you see our photos now, and we are going. Uh, this project was initiated by the students on the course of design and marketing in the fall semester, uh, which uh, the professors are Professor Miller Djovic and from the Faculty of Economics and Professor Lazar Pevic of Faculty of Fine Arts. And for me, especially, and for all of us, is interesting because that activism and banners of the student in the COVID days, and they wanted to do something with the uh, COVID, with uh, immunization, with uh, vaccination, even I don't know what they wanted, they will uh, explain some more and we make something. I think uh, this is the standard atmosphere for the online meetings, as we know. This is some of our, I don't know, for social network and avatars. Yeah, I see now what is it. And now Milos, you could, floor is yours. Can you hear me? I'll just do a sound check first. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So basically at the end of the first semester on the initiative of a few students, myself included, obviously, uh, and with the support of a number of professors, we basically embarked on an extracurricular project with the goal of putting what we learned in the class of design and marketing, putting it into practice. Uh, not only was it meant to reinforce that project, not only was that project meant to reinforce our newly acquired knowledge. It was also meant to play a complementary role to the main class of our education module, which is graphic communication. Uh, 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 during the class of design and marketing, we we've, we've made ourselves familiar with the concepts such as uh, the, term, the ter determination of, of a target audience, the creation of avatars, and the definition of communication, communication goals and media plans, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And basically, all of them create the strong foundation that, if done properly, enable the project to progress smoothly. Uh, during this period also, we, we've, we've, been also, we've also been introduced to platforms such as Slack and Miro, which, enab which enabled us to communicate and create data overviews with, uh, with these. We also had a chance to meet various experts from the specific field, the medical field that is, and familiar, familiarize all, ourselves with the way that they and their teams approach similar projects and that's it for me alexandra so it's great that we met uh, with work on us uh, on a specific problem and learned which are the directions that we need to follow in this kind of uh, project so we met with the planning and process that is important for uh, um, research of this kind and for us, uh, our future and the future of the others. So online work has come to us as an advantage for meetings and quick answers about this project and its, uh, its self planning. So I will explain to you in a few steps our process that we done. 
So first, uh, all this was followed by Zoom meetings and education that we received from the professional, professional people from uh, design, economics, marketing, psychology, medicine, and etc. And the research included gathering of information, uh, contacting the NGOs, uh, the NGO sector, uh, statistical data in Montenegro and worldwide. Uh, in general, creating communication and contacts that are useful to us and our final effect on this project X. So at the start, we applied the um, acquired knowledge from uh, marketing and Zoom education that we had to a specific example process. And at the finish, the result of the process on, and the uh, success of the final product on paper and uh, soon the further realization of the visual part. Thank you. Rade. You can okay. hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So although we started with solution uh, focused thinking, we also kept that educational aspect. And uh, there was always focus for us to gain uh, valuable tools and skills that we would use uh, later on. And some of those were uh, learning how to do a project of a larger scope, such as public health communication strategy development. And it was really important to keep in mind ethical and uh, educational aspects of that. Besides that, some of the concrete tools we used were SWOT and uh, PESEL analysis, uh, determining uh, the tone of the project by which uh, we learned how to develop empathic communication that would uh, allow public concerns, questions, and fears to be addressed. And also how to de develop avatars, customer avatars that uh, would uh, address uh, that would be designed in different tones that would be under one single cohesive strategy. Uh, and uh, here on the slide, we have uh, that's what analysis that we did uh, as a part of research for HPV immunization uh, development. Uh, one of the valuable tools as well was problem framing, uh, in which we uh, learned how to structure the design strategy in a way that would allow further monitoring of the process in uh, later stages and when uh, the communication goes live. Eva? I will shortly talk about uh, the things that we learned um, in this project that will be useful for the future. So we had a great opportunity to work um, in a team that includes experts and students as well. So it is important to learn how to work in a group with diverse people, not only because of their occupation, but there's also an age difference and uh, different attitudes. But uh, regardless of those differences, I think we learned how to cooperate and respect the opinion of each individual, develop and shape the idea all in order to create a complete idea and its possible realization. So after this experience, it will be much easier to work and communicate with people when working on a project. But sometimes we also forget um, the importance of the process that comes before the designing, and that's the research. So design students and creatives, I think we often reach for um, pencil or some other kind of material to immediately create the visuals and shapes. But it's very useful that we learn that in the period of researching, we need to be like a sponge. We have to absorb all the information and then later in the creative process, we can squeeze that sponge. And right before we get to that magical creative process, I think we need to know who will receive our message. And uh, so we have to make uh, a plan. And with the help of our professional team, we now have the ability to apply that knowledge um, to the future projects. So I would like to thank them in the name of uh, the students. Thank you, Eva. Boy, I have the next slide. Yeah, of course. I saw what Alberto wrote that we don't have so much time left. Yeah, yeah. So, so I will make it short. Uh, students told already everything 
uh, in their session because they showed us what we were teaching all the semester or more than one semester, I think. Um, actually, um, I'm, I come from the Faculty of Economics and Faculty of Political Science, but uh, when I come to the Faculty of Fine Arts, I have to say that I feel like I'm at home. And I think that communications and graphic design really come hand to hand uh, each with the other and that uh, we have a great collaboration and I'm so crazy about that creative energy and knowledge uh, that almost all graphic designers have. So uh, I will love working with them. Uh, during uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemics, we all have realized how important is communication. I think that we can uh, easily say that uh, good communication and information really save lives because the effect of pandemics on all the citizens depends a lot on the quality of communication regarding the danger, the risks, involvement of all the community. Uh, that is the main reason why I think the, uh, the development of communication skills became so important and so wanted. I believe that students who study fine arts and graphic design really need at least basic knowledge of communication skills. And I'm really very happy that Faculty of Fine Arts uh, gives them that through curriculum. Uh, but in the times of pandemics, uh, this issue is even more accented. And uh, I'm very glad that those great students uh, that you have just heard uh, decided that they want to improve their knowledge and they were really willing to study an extra topic during more more than one semester uh, we had classes zoom cla like zoom classes zoom meetings every week for a long period of time uh, when anna lazar and mishka asked, called me they asked me to walk the students through the process of developing communication strategy that is not something that is easy even for students who have a lot of knowledge about communication uh, and uh, so we agreed that uh, we would use the meto methodology that combines theory and practice. Uh, we gave them uh, during those sessions a lot of theoretical models uh, that were mainly new to all the students that were involved in this story. Uh, then we would discuss it during those meetings. Uh, we would give them some assignments. We would all, we all learn something new because we had so many guest lectures uh, and we used Slack for some extra communication during the week. Uh, you saw that and Randa told you about the salt and pestle and things that they, they learned and I think that uh, all four of them uh, showed you uh, that they really understood uh, how you should make a communication strategy. Uh, we didn't want, they were so interested in learning new things, they were eager to learn, so we didn't want to stop and we gave them some extra knowledge about making a media plan and the importance of social media in today's uh, in environment and work, so uh, we, we worked a lot on that also. And uh, Raiko, from the MD's perspective. Yeah. Hi, everyone. From a physician's perspective, I would like to emphasize some contextual uh, issues. Uh, for me, it is a public health issue. And uh, um, I saw my um, uh, role in this process like someone who should contribute to the teaching process of uh, future graphic designers. But also I see uh, graphic design as a tool for a solution of public health processes, because at the end of the day, we should uh, save lives and improve lives of, of uh, people. Um, uh, cervical cancer that students uh, choose to, to work on is a very uh, prominent uh, public health problem in Montenegro in terms of women's health. And the um, um, good thing is that we have a tool to prevent that cancer, which is the vaccine uh, against human papilloma virus. And uh, the second good thing is that that, that vaccine is not preventing just uh, cervical cancer, but uh, uh, a lot of types of cancers, uh, both in women and men. 
And uh, the final thing is that uh, youngsters are the most important uh, target group uh, for vaccination against HPV. And at the same time, they are very important stakeholder in this story. Regarding process, I'm very happy that it was not imposed by someone like uh, government or medical community. It was uh, a typical bottom-up project and uh, it involved uh, a lot of uh, different uh, experts and that is environment that I, I, I like to, to work in. I, I'm sorry to say that it is not the case now these days in my institution, Institute of Public Health. And it was really a mutual uh, learning process. We exchanged a lot of ideas and uh, I, I, I could see a synergy of group work and multidisciplinary approach at the same time. So the gains, main gains are that we have a, a group of future young graphic designers sensitized to public health issues. I am very satisfied if I was at least successful in demystification of a strictly medical or medicalized approach to, towards the public health solution, uh, problems. Uh, the second gain is that, uh, that we, from one unstructured activity through the very pleasant process, uh, reached a very serious product that would, and I hopefully, I, I hope that it will be used in real life uh, to save lives. And for me personally, gain was that was, was fascinating and enriching personal experience in my lifelong learning path. And if I may conclude, uh, the consequence of any shift depends on our reaction and our solution. Thank you. Thank you, Raiko and Robert for the end, short report. Robert, organize everything, Slack, take care about every meeting and, every, and so on. Yes, uh, uh, the only thing, uh, we are short on time, so I will just try to, to uh, uh, do the recap of what's Project X. It's basically the project initiated by students. It involved a lot of people from various areas. We did it like uh, uh, trying to get as many people from various fields. We had, uh, I don't know, neuroscientists. Uh, 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 I, uh, I'm sorry that we didn't manage to include philosophers, but we have a lot of people from different fields. Uh, initiative started from students and what we have done we said okay let's try to get as many uh, uh, people having a lot of different skills together and let's serve as an asset to students the process wasn't uh, meant to uh, result with an uh, end product or something we didn't want to put pressure on anybody it lasted a long time we did it on a weekly basis and we have something like i think 17 meetings which lasted like two or two and a half hours uh, and uh, we created background projects in which uh, meta project, let's to say, which uh, tried to uh, define what will be uh, the method to uh, do the group, group work and transfer the knowledge to enable people from various disciplines to work together. Uh, that was the project X, and now we have uh, working. And now we are working on project Epsilon, which is basically another project uh, which will start with people from Institute of Public Health trying to merge various uh, medical disciplines together. Uh, the fourth thing which we wanted to present, and we will do it very quickly, is something which we call design for kids internally. And this was the opportunity which opened up after all of these uh, uh, activities which we did before. Uh, it was organized by NGO Flux. NGO Flux by itself is an, our attempt to make institutional, uh, uh, to make some institution NGO or whatever, uh, which can structure activities related to uh, these new uh, projects which we are doing. Uh, and it's basically NGO, small NGO uh, involving all the people uh, which were organizing or taking part in previous activities which we have presented. Uh, it's, uh, it have uh, flux as a co uh, fluid uh, uh, 
as a main activity. But beside that, we organize this uh, Young Designers Regional Poster Award, which will be uh, now, which is now shifting uh, from the area of posters to uh, other media. So we will have animations, short form illustrations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is small thing about NGO Flux, and uh, Anna will speak a little bit more about the concrete project. I, 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 uh, Leila Abdic, a member of uh, NGO Flux, initiated this uh, project. Uh, she saw the open call from our Ministry of Education, uh, which was for the talented uh, pupils from the north of uh, Montenegro. And she said, OK, let's do something. Uh, so I said, oh, well, I never work with the teenage uh, groups, and I don't know if we I do, I know I will be able to do it, but we write the project and we pass uh, through. And on the end, in October last year, we have a plan to have the uh, three um, groups modeling or sculpture, design, graphic design, and photography, and 15 um, participants per each. But we, we received 75 applications, and Leila said, okay, take them all. And we start with uh, we uh, for graphic design was the most more of them were interested for graphic design, uh, and we have uh, on the end twenty nine uh, participants in the online mentorship school. Twenty four two, two of them finished, and twenty of them for all three groups selected for creative campus. Ten of them for graphic design campus. Masha uh, assists in graphic design uh, uh, online mentorship school and campus. And Masha is a, my guest panelist today. Masha, could you please continue a little bit? Thank you, Anna. Uh, our school had three courses, as Anna said, sculpture, design, and photography. So Vladka Vujošević, a sculptor from Faculty of Fine Arts, was the mentor of the first school. Professor Anna and I was uh, teaching at the School of Design and Professor of Photography at Faculty of Fine Arts, uh, Lazar Pejovic and Krsto Vulovic, who was leading the School of Photography. Okay, so uh, uh, school was held by four, uh, six months. It has like two uh, periods online and a uh, campus that we hold in Djevlja. So six man of, months of online mentorship school and three days of creative campus. Uh, we have a plan to have exhibition in three different towns. Uh, idea of this was to be located for the uh, children of the north part of Montenegro. So uh, the exhibition is going to be held there. Uh, so we had a program, different program from uh, for online part. Uh, we want to introduce them part by part with design. First uh, class was introduction to pictogram, uh, where we gave them assignment to make um, for two different motifs, different pictograms. And then the next class, we will have like evaluation of that uh, assignment they did. And then also presentation of the new of the new assignment that was like the flow we had entire online school so we had introduced them with a pictogram typography logotype poster illustration and in the end we had like a recap so here you can see atmosphere these dark photos are from the zoom and this light was from the uh, from the campus in Pljevlja. Uh, these are some of the works we had from the there are no students, there are children. Uh, so here you can see like pictograms, typography, and different uh, different all other assignments. Uh, this is like a typo photo. One of the assignments uh, we gave to them. It was uh, their choice to. Uh, it was their choice uh, to choose the word they want to present. Uh, material and all we did was like said to them uh, to take care about how to photograph things and uh, all that to have se uh, sense so it is important to say they're really small children 
children fifth to ninth grade. Uh, so they really understood good all of this assignment. This, this here is from the process of the campus. Idea was to uh, put everything together that we did in online school. So to uh, make a whole thing like one brand of uh, visual identity of, of um, publishing house for the children. And we have a motive uh, for the logo, it was all. So we have gave them the first assignment to uh, create as many as they can different alls. And then we have uh, one thing to do together to create the names for this publishing house. We have like who who. It's how uh, the all sounds. Then we have dreamer, uh, little o, and this, these are the final work they did. So they use collage technique that we already use in online school and then make a stylization of this uh, all and then uh, make it a whole with typography. Uh, so during the during the school and at the campus, we, um, we get some feedbacks from the students and also from the uh, professor from elementary school. Uh, everyone, well, we can say everyone was actually satisfied with this. Uh, at the end, we wanted to uh, get some feedback from the children and they said every one of them actually answered to us and they said they are really happy, not only for making new friends, it's for new experience and really teaching some new things that they don't have opportunity to, uh, to get to in school. So we then uh, create some uh, round table around table with a professor uh, of visual art class. So we discussed with them about uh, making design part of the elementary school. Is it necessary and how actually children react to it? So uh, our we can say our conclusion was that we can continue that project. Uh, is it doesn't matter is it part of the school officially or we are going to do it on this way and what is important maybe to add uh, something we uh, make safe uh, self and external evaluation uh, for the next step we, we will continue we'll uh, uh, we will throw out uh, sculpture will not be the part of our uh, for now it will be maybe the second art school uh, mentorship school uh, we will go for eight month and may include photography like a part of uh, graphic design how on that way is on the our faculty too and what is the most important for me and Masha first we are enjoy we was really happy all the time uh, and it was fantastic something new for us because we work with the Olders, and uh, the other thing was uh, we must uh, we, the, our teaching we recapitulate we must change our language uh, to to make more simple. I have the same slides which I show usually to the students, but for them, but the, another story and so on. It helped us a lot. And I think the uh, next uh, semester, our presentation, our lectures will be more better because of that pupils, uh, the people, uh, children, uh, like we say, that participants for our uh, group. And what is the mm, the most important for? for us, generally speaking, and uh, we uh, think that it, it happens uh, in MDF um, uh, project. Yes, knowledge is knowledge transferred, uh, new friendship, uh, what is maybe the most important, but for um, the north of Montenegro, you know, you have the rich south and poorest north is general, generally speaking, they had uh, that kind of uh, 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 Things, but uh, uh, really, there's more. The lots of them are from villages. They even even COVID is not COVID. They didn't will have opportunity to have the some art or design classes. And for um, for me, I think that equality, availability, and gave them opportunity uh, is the main uh, goal. Uh, what we, I think, we win. Robert. I will just recap. 
we had we we have presented you four things which we have been doing this year uh, during the COVID. We've been enriched by the experience of going online. Uh, it created new opportunities. Uh, uh, these four things were related to the faculty as an institution, then Fluid Forum, which was escape from the institution, then Project X, where we created uh, uh, another teaching experience outside of the faculty, and finally, uh, uh, the, the online mentorship school. Uh, all of this uh, is somehow corresponding to the times we are living in. We see the, the world which is uh, just exposed due to the COVID, all the inequalities, all the poverty, all the weakness of existing institutions. And I invite you all to participate in something a little bit different. We are now in a network world. All of us are nodes of this network. Uh, we have different skills, different knowledge, different attitudes, and only in a joint work through outside of the institutions and through this network, we can make things change. And also, not to forget, we must always remember how privileged we are. A lot of people don't have opportunity to uh, engage in this work. Uh, they don't have internet connection, they don't have physical space. Imagine, for example, family of three kids which are going online, have one house, two telephones, and probably lack of internet and all of the issues which they are facing every day. So uh, uh, our privilegedness must result in something uh, that our work is uh, uh, geared toward uh, those most uh, in poverty. Thank you. All right. Okay, so first of all, on behalf of the DEC, you know, I can't thank all of you enough uh, to be here. Um, Robert, uh, I couldn't think of a very closing, um, you know, and that privilege that you're saying we have is what has us together. I mean, there's no way Anna and I could become uh, pen pals is the closest thing I have right now. Uh, if it were not for the digital, you know, savviness that we both have and the fact that even though English is not the first language of either of us, it's the language that brought us together so that we could speak and participate in events. So uh, I am very aware of that privilege. And as I, as I said in the chat right now, you know, uh, we're in that phase that, oh, my God, another Zoom call. But I bet that in a year and a half, a lot of us are going to be like, damn, remember when all those cool people got together on Zoom? Because, you know, as the world reopens however that you know that, that there's a lot of weird implications with that term uh but then we're going to have to rethink the future and i think that this session today it shows that all of you were thinking we're motivating we're interacting and i can't wait to chat with all of you in a year and a half to see what the next evolution was because when the world becomes hybrid and uh you know there was a conversation in the in the chat about the future of hybrid events now we're thinking about what will be the stigma of being online versus being physical? And what's gonna be that privilege? Who can fly? Who can't fly? Who can make it? And we are in the DEC, we're starting to think about that and how can we make inclusive events moving forward that A, doesn't make it like there's you know a, a second tier quality of events because this year we proved that all of us in this equalizer of a rectangle screen um, can be together without those hierarchical structures. And I don't know if you noticed, but shift by design, there's no titles in people's names. There's no uh, professional, you know, you don't know who's a PhD, you don't know who's an MFA or, and that's by design because we realize that by democratizing access to the conversation, the students on the call are as equal as the veterans who've been on here for 40 years. And so for those of you that are younger on the call and your careers are starting, I couldn't, I couldn't think of a better time. And yes, it's been awful to do this digitally, to force to learn education digitally, but to have an opportunity to be at the table. You know, my, the first 10 years of my career was trying to get to that table. And these Zoom calls have allowed us to be here. And I encourage all of you to understand these opportunities, just like Robert said, the privilege is not only the, uh, the privilege is not only recognizing that we have it, it's taking advantage that if we do have it, we can make something out of it. And these presentations were exciting and I can't think of a better way to, to also see 
that on the other side of the world, in the Caribbean and in the United States, suddenly we're all thinking about the same thing. And those notes that Robert mentioned, I'm so happy that Anna is a note in my network now, and hopefully that we can help her as well. Um, I do have a, one final question for the students on the call. And I wanted to get a sense of, as the world moves forward, you've seen this faculty help you model these new experiences, but what do you want of the next six months? What's an ideal of what's, what's coming? Or let's say the next year, six months is maybe too close to think about a future cast. But what, what would be an ideal in the next year for you as you develop as a designer, thinker, cultural uh, you know, actor? What do you think uh, that's coming or that you would wanna see come? And anybody just open your microphone and let's see. A reasonable sleep schedule, firstly. <laughs> well, I can't promise that'll happen, but okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Any ideas valid? It's not about being right or wrong. It's about, you know. In uh, relation to the project that we were working on for the HPV immunization, when we started, there was like no uh, slightest, like uh, any, 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 uh, any like sort of budget for the vaccine for the HPV vaccine. And as we were working on at the end of the project, like maybe two months ago, uh, the government announced that there will be uh, parting a, a part of the budget for the HPV vaccine from the end of this year. So we are uh, in terms of this project, really uh, lucky that such a big opportunity opened out of the nowhere. And uh, that's uh, something that's really connecting to this idea of using this privilege or opportunities that have come up. So in terms of that, but more like broadly, I, I, I wouldn't have a clue for <laughs> things that I'm expecting. Well, and, and, and again, it, you don't necessarily have to expect it now, but try to put yourself in a situation that if you can future cast, you can make things better for you, but also for others. And I think that's, the, that's why future casting is so important because it's not for myself, it's for the community of people around me. And I think that's the important part here that we were able to get up to here by these amazing strategies, Anna improvising, Anna making all these uh, gestures and connections, but now all of us have the responsibility to continue that forward because she has empowered us to do so. Okay, Lisa, I think then then that's good. Amazing, amazing. So final round of applause for all, all of you who came and joined us today. It was just incredible to learn more about all of the things that you're doing, right? Sometimes we feel so isolated in our own single institution that we forget to like look up and look out, right? We talked about that at a panel the other day. And so it's just really incredible to be able to so, um, so in such a detailed way, see all of the things that you all are doing. I just on fire with ideas. So thank you so much, all of the panelists. Thank you, especially the students who joined us too. Um, thank you everyone who came and attended this session, which was very early for some of us, but later for others. Um, so don't forget we have more sessions to come today. I also want a special thanks to Christopher for being amazing in the chat. He was dropping links in there and answering questions and making comments. Christopher, thank you so much for, for taking up that role. Um, so our next session is actually going to start in about an hour and 20 minutes. I believe Alberto, correct me, because yesterday I was like yeah. making too much time. Yeah. I think it's an hour yeah, and 20. Um, and so our next session that I hope you can join us for is going to be teaching global histories of graphic design. And this is like a powerhouse panel. There are a ton of people who are going to be um, coming onto that call to talk about graphic design and a global history of graphic design. So I really do hope that all of you will join us there. And otherwise, go take a break, get some more coffee, get a drink, whatever time it is where you are, and we will see you back here very, very soon. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>